Hello and welcome to the latest Royal Roundup from Talk TV. So pop the kettle on, come and join us. This is The Royal Tea. I'm Sarah Houston. Coming up today, the royals remain at odds with Netflix over the crown. We'll be discussing which is the latest scene from the new series to be causing an issue. Plus, is Meghan right? Is the UK citizenship test too difficult? And we'll be discussing all the latest fallout from Harry's book announcement. Joining me today to discuss all that is Royal commentator and Talk TV host Daisy McAndrew, the author of Queen of Our Times, The Daily Mail's Robert Hardman, and the Royal editor of The Sunday Times, Roya Nika. Now let's start with the news that Rishi Sunak will now be attending COP27. On Tuesday evening, William delivered a speech urging leaders not to lose focus despite turbulent times. Do we think that could be significant? Could he have played a part in that U-turn? Yeah, I, I think that the Prime Minister's got himself in a right old muddle on, on this issue. And obviously that's more political rather than royal. But the fact that both uh, William and Charles have long been banging the drum on this issue, it's obvious that Charles wanted, wants to go. So I do think it's significant that William continues uh, to talk out on this subject. And I think the problem with doing any sort of U-turn, whether it's political or royal, is once you've done one, others tend to be inevitable. Well, I mean, does, are we going to have a U-turn on the King going to COP? We've, I, got, we've got this I don't think Palace so. reception. I don't think so. Um, we've had more briefing this morning from the Palace actually saying that the, the, the decision remains the same. We've been asking him ever since we broke the story in the Sunday Times four, four weeks ago that Liz Truss wasn't going to let the king go. The rest of the royal um, correspondents have been asking Buckingham Palace again and again, week in, week out, is that going to change? We're new told, PM, new decision? We're exactly. And we're told again this morning, no unanimous agreement. But listen, for all the briefing of Buckingham Palace that the king isn't disappointed not mm. to be going to COP and that, you know, he, he, he's fine with that decision. Of course, this is the climate change king. This is one of the world's global leaders on the subject. And... He doesn't need to go and give a tub thumping, tub thumping political speech like he has done sort of before. He could go and do what the Queen did last year at COP, which is give a really encouraging, good luck to you all, this is really important work. And I think it is a wrong decision by the government mm. not to have the King supporting the government's message at COP. I, I disagree on that. I, I think last year was special because we were hosting COP and it was a big COP. I mean, I was there, as I'm sure you were too. And it was about setting targets. It was, it was a, a, if you like, a sort of pivotal one. Um, and so, I mean, the Queen was going to be there until she was unwell and, and, and sent the video. Um, but there hasn't been a sort of history of Prince Charles going to every COP, but he was the man who founded COP, if you like, one of the co-founders. He actually created the, 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 the summit back in Brazil in the early 90s that led to the Earth Summit that led to COP. So he's like sort of grandfather so of COP. So doesn't that mean he's he should got, be there? No, because he, hasn't, he doesn't go every time. He doesn't need to. I mean, his credentials are very well established. But there's another point here. He's the new king, and I think it's so important where you go your first visit as king it's been like when you become the u.s president or you less so when you're prime minister but a great deal of thought goes into where is your first overseas trip it, it's a real diplomatic coup for someone and i think were he to go to cop it would effectively be saying nothing's changed really i'm i'm, I'm still prince charles at heart i think he needs to, to hold it keep his powder dry on his first overseas trip he's doing a brilliant he'll do a huge reception at the palace he'll, he'll probably do a video he'll send a message no one will be in any doubt as to how seriously he takes cop but the fact of him getting on a plane and then being accused of using up more carbon emissions and air miles and all the rest of it to join x hundred other leaders in their private jets um he did a big number at cop last year he won't be as high profile at cop this year because he's not hosting it i think stay at home make a big noise there okay. he he wants to go otherwise <laughs> otherwise why would the king seek advice of the government if he, he he definitely wanted to go i know he had a lot of engagements planned there with his sustainable markets initiative and i think those will still go ahead without him so he definitely wanted to go he's not going and i think he'll go again but maybe not this time. And what about the role of William in all of this? I mean, we know that on this well, subject, they very much see eye well, to eye. The, the, the timing this year, because COP is in November and William's Earthshot Prize in Boston is also in November, yeah. he couldn't do both. So his focus is on the Earthshot Prize at the end of the month. It is the saga that keeps rumbling on. The Crown's decision to include Martin Bashir's infamous panorama interview with Princess Diana in the latest series has allegedly upset the Prince of Wales the most. Have Netflix gone too far or should we have expected this? I mean, if you're documenting, Robert, the 1990s, mm. this was 
pretty fundamental to what happened, albeit it has now been discredited. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the Crown has, um, now has a track record for picking out uh, uh, a, few, few, a few true things and then bolting on a lot of made-up things. So I'm sure we can expect the same with this. Only we're now getting into, into a part of sort of, not just history, of sort of recent times that people mm. remember very well personally. I mean, more and more of the audience will remember this. And of course, for, for the Prince of Wales, Prince William as he was then, I mean, this was, this was an incredibly painful moment. But I, I think fundamentally my objection to the Crown is I think all great historical figures can expect to have their lives dramatised. Um, that, that goes without saying. But it doesn't usually happen while they're still alive, and it certainly doesn't happen while they're still in the job. Now, this was being made while the Queen was still very much mm. uh, in situ, um, and a lot of it was being made after the death of Prince Philip. And I, 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 I leave it to your viewers to decide, but I'm afraid when I watch it, I think it's, it's calculating, it's callous, um, and I think it's entirely inappropriate. I, and think, I think the big danger of it is, I don't, I don't think people in this country, people in this country on the whole can see it for what it is, but I have found in recent years that around the world it is taking yeah. root as the settled narrative on what really happened, and that's what's really dangerous. I, I think Robert's absolutely right. When I talk to people here in the UK, they have an understanding, and also they, they now have their own memories because we're now getting mm. to such, mm. you know, this is our the, 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 the things that happened it? so recently that people actually remember, but of course abroad, and particularly in the States, mm. it is a totally different picture, yeah. and I, I do a lot of reporting and talking about the royals on, on American networks, and they genuinely think it's a documentary, mm -hmm. played out by actors, a docudrama. <coughs> and so an, an incident so important as this, I, I understand why the royals are nervous about it. However, I actually think that if this you know, episode of The Crown, or two episodes of The Crown that, that covers the Bashir interview, actually explains to people how wronged Diana mm. and the boys were by Martin Bashir's behaviour. I think that's got to be quite a positive thing in some ways because a lot of people remember the interview but they don't know the background that we all now know of how Martin Bashir got the interview, um, you know, and, and how many things were done wrong. So in some ways, lifting the lid on that to a global audience might be quite helpful and certainly I think people will be very sympathetic to William. It will undoubtedly be painful for them because it's a painful episode and they're picking at that scab. How, how concerned are the royal family, do you think, Roy, about what, what is to come? Um, I, think they're quite I think they're quite sanguine about the Crown. I, I know that, you know, a lot of the households would su support the view and that they're quite... They would welcome having a fictional disclaimer at the beginning of each mm -hmm. episode. Netflix has mm -hmm. stood firm on that and will only do it for the trailer. Um, I, I, you know, there was an, an interesting story that emerged this week that Dominic West, yeah. who's playing the King, or the Prince of Wales as he is in the Crown, wrote to him, uh, his office, saying offering his resignation from the Prince's Trust, where he has an ambassadorial role, and a letter came back saying, we, we don't accept your resignation, we understand they're two different things. I, look, I think, I, I think, you know, the King has had a very good start. It's been a very, you know, emotional, difficult time. But I think, you know, the crown starts a bumpy period for the royal family over the next few months. Like you say, you know, it will bring back those painful memories of the 90s where Charles was going through a very tricky time with his marriage. Um, then very soon after that, we're going to have the Netflix documentary from Harry and Meghan. Mm and then we're going to have Harry's book. So I think of all of those three things, they are least worried about mm. the Crown. Yeah, and we're going to talk a bit more about <laughs> Harry's book uh, in just a moment. But, but staying on the theme of the Crown, that there were rumours that Sarah Ferguson had offered to give some assistance to the writers of the show. Those claims have now been strongly refuted. Um, she is an author and producer herself. Would there have been an issue if she'd worked with Netflix? I think if it had come out officially that she'd worked um, with Netflix against the royal family's wishes or without telling them, I think that would certainly be an issue. I personally find it very difficult to believe. I mean, you know, she has been known to do foolish things, <laughs> as, you know, as have plenty of members of the royal family. I think if it has been refuted and if it were true, then the truth would come out, you know, if, if Netflix knew that that was the case. So I, I kind of put this story in a, in a box of hard to believe. But, yes, mean, if but it is was there an true, argument that she could damaging. have had a positive influence? She could have actually played a role in, in kind of fact-checking. She, it, do you know what, I, I, my, I get the sort of sense with Peter Morgan, who is a brilliant writer in his team, that they have a story they want to tell. And I don't think mm. however much members of the royal family, working or non-working members of the royal family, might say that's not strictly accurate. Their view is, this is fiction, we're allowed to fictionalise, so... Yeah, but they don't make that explicitly clear. Peter Morgan no, came no, out with don't. this line where he said, I, I'm not interested in accuracy, I'm interested in truth, but, which but is just hilarious. And I mean, it's very low on both, the, the, I would the say. The kind of factual record, what had been out there in interviews, and yet, 
the quotes from are the different. Panorama interview are different yeah. and the Annas Horribilis speech yeah. is different. Yeah. I, I don't quite understand no, that. No, I, I, I find, I mean, some of the language that they change, they change it f um, in order to make sure that the audience understands it, which I find rather patronising and you know, that, that they've changed. I mean, one of the lines that they've put in the Queen's mouth for that Anna Cerebralist speech talks about her family literally being the sun and water, which is a nauseating, nonsensical, non-grammatical, irritating phrase that I just think the Queen, if she cared, would she'd be tur said. turning in her grave because she never would have said something mm. so preposterous. That So personally, I find that really irritating. Despite everything, will we all be watching? Of course. <laughs> I will because I have to, yeah, but uh, not with, with, with no great pleasure. All I would say about The Crown is just go back to the, some of the earlier episodes. Winston Churchill dying in high summer. I think everybody knows Winston Churchill died in the middle of winter. Says it all, really. So take what you see with a pinch, <laughs> pinch of salt. of a wheelbarrow of salt. <laughs> <laughs> the latest episode of Meghan's podcast, Archetypes, was released earlier this week with Sophie Trudeau, the Canadian First Lady, as her guest and a discussion about the UK citizenship test. Meghan claimed the questions were so hard, even Harry was stumped. Mm. Is this a fair point? Is it too hard or is Meghan being dramatic? Let's put our panel uh, to the test. Uh -oh. Here we go. I've always wanted to do this. I've got the answers in front of me, so I'm at an advantage. Uh, here are a couple of questions that we've picked out of the citizenship test, mm -hmm. and let's see how much you know and whether you'd pass. The pass rate is 75%, by the way. Is it? Uh, mm -hmm. Who supported King Charles I during the Civil War? Was it A, the Roundheads, B, the Suffragettes, C, the Quakers, or D, the Cavaliers? Cavaliers. We need a buzzer. Cavali uh, you, Cavaliers. Yeah. Point to Roya. <laughs> I remember that from school. There, there is uh, quite an easy way to remember that one if you know your dogs, because you can think of a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And, ah, then, and, then, and then you, you can go. remember that that's the answer. <laughs> Let's see if you're as quick on the next one. When is the anniversary of the Battle of Boyne celebrated in Northern Ireland? Is it A, March, B, May, C, June, or D, July? Mm. I think those orange Daisy's men... Daisy's on the buzzer. <laughs> I think those orange men marches are in the summer holidays, so I think it's July. It's July. Is that and right? it's Battle of the Boyne. Battle oh. of the Boyne. That was me misreading it. I'm sorry. But I Robert failed. had to look it up. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> but I you two have failed. Well, I have to wear, love to wear. No, I, I remember going out and covering the marching season in, yeah. uh, in, in, uh, in Northern Ireland a few times. Um, and it's, 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 it's big. Having said that, I couldn't tell you anything about the Battle of the Boyne. No, and I have to say those were two of the hardest questions we picked mm, out from the sample because some of them were things like, where is the crown jewels kept? which I hope we all know. I think we all know. <laughs> I think we all know that. Uh, as for Harry and Meghan, it has been reported they have no plans to spend their Christmas over here. Uh, Roya, what can you tell us about this? I mean, is that, that inevitable? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> of course they're not going to spend Christmas here. Not with the book coming out they're just afterwards. They're about to drop a few bombs and... Um... I, look, they haven't spent Christmas here for a long time now and, you know, they have their lives over in California and... You know, it'll Christmas will come after the, Net, the Netflix documentary. There'll be, uh, you know, the New Year sees a book coming. I don't think that's a time that they will likely be spending time with their UK family here. And we know from everything that's happened over the last, you know, year or two from the Oprah interview, even to the very testy times during, you know, London Bridge and the fortnight over the Queen's death, it was difficult behind the scenes mm. with Harry and Meghan and the rest of the family. It was, you know, it's been widely reported by, by all of us. So um, I don't think it's any great surprise that they're going to be away from these shores over Christmas. And Robert, last week we got the title of mm. Harry's book, Spare. We got a date mm. at January the 10th, so it's not necessarily going to be an easy Christmas mm. in anticipation uh, of what it might have in store. I, I mean, how, how damaging do you think it could be? Well, it, we, of course, we'll wait and see. I mean, it, it could uh, be if they, if they decide to go for more truth bombs or their truth, as, as we now have to call it. Uh, it, it, there could be uh, all sorts of problems there, but my hunch is that um, that Harry won't um, uh, burn all the bridges with his family. He doesn't need to. For this to be a sensational international bestseller, he can just tell us, uh, you know, the story of his childhood. I mean, you know, we're all journalists. We know what the sort of. I mean, if uh, Harry's Harry's account of my first trip to McDonald's with my mum, I mean, that would fill two pages of any newspaper. He doesn't have to go down the 
the kind of, you know, let's, let's just blow it all up route. Now, maybe he does. And my hunch is he'll be very hard on the media, he'll be very hard on the palace institution, the officials, um, maybe a few old scores being settled there. But I what think, about I Camilla? Because I've been concerned that, that no, she I, won't fare I, I, I think, well. I think he will be um, wise enough to, 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 to just leave the family generally in, alone. That's I, my hunch. I, 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 don't, don't... I think that's a very optimistic prediction okay. of this book. I think if you look at... I, I, everything you say is true in terms of sort of people's interest, but I think if you look at what we've heard him talk about previously in terms of relationships with his father, the genetic cycle of pain he's talked about, the fact this is being ghostwritten by J.D. Moringa, yeah. who has a track record of, you know, writing about his own history with his father, whose incredible memoir he ghostwrote about Andre Agassi. I mean, when you look at the covers, yeah, they're I mean, identical. I, 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 a lot the of... fact that it is called The Spare, I, I think family ties will come under the spotlight. Yeah. Harry I, I, will have a are the publishers thing. not going to be expecting that for their Publishers money? will, but yeah. been, there has been a lot of rewriting. I mean, there been, there's a lot of, well, not just updating, but taking stuff out. There's been, you know, there, there have been tensions. But, but also the, there's, there, there's in, another in danger point. Round. It's it's not just what ends up in the book. The publishers will also be expecting, I would imagine, uh, Harry to go on a big tour, you know, publicity tour, going around all, you know, putting himself in front of you know, interviewers, going on the late show whatever it might be though every one of those interviews that he presumably is committed to doing contractually will be dangerous for for the royal family because uh, um, harry's going to be put on the spot he's going to be asked personal questions we know he's a very emotional person and you know, we saw what happened with the oprah interview no matter how well he plans for those something you know other things that he may be didn't put in the book might come out in those interviews. So it's going to be weeks and weeks of yeah, spicy I mean, no, fingernails. It's going to be a huge story and there's going to be loads in there for us to be uh, picking Are over. Are UK book but tour? I wouldn't have thought so. You think he'll stay away? I, I, he might give interviews, you know, from California. Yeah. But, um, but if, 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 if uh, let's not forget, he's still a royal, correct me on this, but I, uh, Britain's still too dangerous for him to visit on a regular basis, isn't it? Well, I think we've he's seen, you know, he visited before the Queen died for charity engagements and managed to but get past But he missed Prince that. Philip's um, I memorial think, service because the yeah. Home Office mm. wouldn't give him bodyguards. Yes, so. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him here in the new year at some point. I would imagine. Also, I'm the sure fact we'll see him in the, on these shores again, but I just don't know whether it'll be a sort of regular book tour where he's sort of doing the, the rounds, the radio shows. Maybe he'll come No, I this. don't think he'll do the Signing in a bookshop. <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't think we'll see him in Hatch, Isles or Walsons or any other good independent <laughs> Any other yeah. bookstore, yes. I do, I do think the fact that it's coming out the day after Kate Middleton's birthday, I'm sure it's a complete coincidence, mm. but it's slightly rubbing salt in the wound. You can imagine her, you know, uh, January the 9th, the day before the book here, comes. Here you go, here's your advanced <laughs> copy. Yeah, here's... <laughs> Happy birthday to you, <laughs> and you can go and see how many entries there are about you. I mean, we had had these reports that they had intended 2023 to be this year of reconciliation, but when you, when you kick off with yeah. the book, is that in t in even possible? No, I don't think so. I think when you kick off with the book, as Roy was saying, not just the book, you know, the, the, the Netflix series, the continuing... Yeah, that, you know, that I think, is in a way, as you were saying the Crown is the least of their worries. I would say the Netflix series is possibly the, 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 the peak of their worries because yeah. obviously that's both of them... Whereas the spare is nominally, at least, it's it's Harry, not both. Yeah. Could, could you argue that they then get it all out there, draw a line, and then they start a process of rebuilding? Or is that me being well financially? That's optimistic. not going to make sense for them if they get it all out there and draw a line. Then where's their next series coming from? What's their next? I mean, yes, you know, Megan's, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it. Megan's podcast is is doing well. As in, I think the numbers the numbers are doing well, and so far she's managed. Although there's something in it every time, it's not setting the, the royal family on fire. You know, it's not uh, it's not upsetting too many um, apple carts with that. But they've got to keep going. Well, they they've got four months between publication date of the book and the coronation yeah. to build bridges, because they will want to be at the coronation, and the king will want mm. them there. Mm. Mm. It is his son, after all. And finally, we have seen pictures of Mike Tyndall in his jungle kit. Uh, what do we think he's, he's going to bring to jungle life at Panel? And how's he going to get on with Matt Hancock? <laughs> I think he'll be very, very grateful that Matt Hancock's going in, take off a lot of heat from, from him and make him look very good uh, by comparison. I think he'll be popular. Mm -hmm. I, I think he'll do well. And I don't think the royals have got much to worry about. I can see that there's a hypocrisy argument. You know, Harry and Meghan not allowed to go and make any money, criticised for cashing in. And then you've got Mike Tyndall doing this. I can see that The difference that's... is they were working royals, Mike Tyndall wasn't and never has been. So I yes, but they're not now working royals and people are still criticising them. I think that's that's where the, the, the accusations of why are people Mike being... Mike Tyndall came in for quite a lot of flack. 
Yes. Actually, when that came out that he was going in last week, he, there, was a lower, there was a lot of kind of question mark comment. And I think the pizza advert possibly was a step <laughs> too far, but I, th I think he'll be good in it. Well, that is all we've got time for this week. My thanks to Daisy, Robert and Roya for their insight. We will be back next week with all of the latest on the Royal Family. We hope you can join us again. We'll see you then.